Barakatuh. Uh, we've been uh, talking yesterday about a new role of each one of us, which is the role of the wake-up caller. As you might have seen in the last three days, or during the last three weeks or not days, we've been traveling to Bangladesh, to Somalia, and to Turkey for visits to refugees camps and to displaced people and to difficult places in these countries. Um, but if you have not seen the footage which have been recorded, you can actually go to the YouTube which is written here so you can see all the footage. Today we are talking about a subject, a new subject as I said earlier on, which is the wake-up caller. Uh, why I chosen such a subject? Because it's needed to be done by every and each one of us, as well as this was a suggestion from one of our uh, team worker, Ahmad Sheikh. We see how Ahmad Sheikh and uh, Abdurrahman Nahas helping me, and uh, who put this uh, talk or this presentation together. Before I start the talk, I'd like to congratulate you with the last two or three days of Ramadan. And I wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your fasting, your prayer, your uh, recitation of the Quran, your contribution of zakat to humanity, and, 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 and Allah will shield you. And your Ramadan should be not only as a fruit for us as Muslims, but as a fruit for everybody, your neighborhood, your friends, your colleague, who are Muslims and non-Muslims. Coming back to the talk of today, which you call it the wake-up caller. You have the remote? The wake-up caller. Can you get it, please? The wake-up caller is this man. This man is the wake-up caller. This man is any one of us. Any one of us. We have no excuse of not becoming a wake-up caller. No excuse whatsoever. Wake-up caller is a tradition in the Muslim world where during the month of Ramadan, somebody come at night before the early morning prayer, before the beginning of the fasting with a drum and a stick, and keep drumming the drum or beating the drum to wake up people to take the early morning meal as well as do their prayer before they fast on the second day. And we call it in Arabic musaharati and we call the meal sihri or suhoor. So this is coming from uh, this tradition to us. To us now, he is waking people for prayer. He is waking people for meal. But we are waking people to build their society and their community. As I said, this is the definition of the wake-up caller who come only in Ramadan. But you and we and us have to play this role of wake-up caller every day, every hour, every hour everywhere. This is the talk, this is the discussion we've been created to me by Abdurrahman al-Sheikh. Who is he? What do we mean by sustainable wake-up caller? Uh, who is the wake-up caller? Is the one who made himself responsible or herself responsible. You as a woman or a girl, you as a man or a young man, make yourself responsible to do what? Okay. Guiding and advising the decision makers in your country, in your organization, in your institution, in your government. So they can better utilize the national resources, build a better and sustainable future for the generations to come, and can structure their strategic plans accordingly. This is, this is who is the wake-up caller. It's you, it's us, it's we to do that. Okay? Guiding, advising, and this is a part of the message of the prophets and messengers of God. They were wake-up caller to their society, to their nation, to the humanity as a whole. As I say earlier on, as I said earlier on, Moses, peace be upon him, came to save 
the Israelites from the atrocity and the, the unjust system in Egypt of the Pharaoh, the, at the Pharaoh dynasty. And they took them to Sinai. Jesus, peace be upon him, came to save the lost sheep of the Israelites. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to be a mercy for mankind. These are all of them as well as others, prophets and reformers, were to be considered wake-up callers. We and you are wake-up, have to become wake-up callers. What do you mean by deprivation? Yani in, the, in the world of deprivation and void, in, in, in the title. As, as Abdul Rahman, as uh, uh, Ahmed Sheikh said, the, in us, uh, in our search, we as the economical deprivation or social deprivation or environmental deprivation. Economical deprivation in our countries, it is lack of economic development, research, innovation, development, transparency, qualified human resources, sustainable, credible institution. This is when we look, when we talk about the economy. You are a wake-up caller for economical deprivation. You are a wake-up caller for social deprivation, lack of social justice. The injustice which is facing the millions and millions of people either in the homeland or the refugees or the displaced or any, any other country. Environmental deprivation is coming from lack of development program to save environment. Pollution. Okay? As we call it, desertification. Cutting or uprooting the forests in Bangladesh, in Amazon, in India, as well as others. For developmental and economical reason. You become a wake-up caller to defend not doing that. What is the objectives of you, all of us, as wake-up callers? What are our objectives? What our objectives should be? First one, to fight poverty, which is a part of the message of any prophet. Peace be upon him. To buy poverty, hunger, deprivation, and so on and so on. Second, to provide good education programs education and health system to empower citizen in the country. Citizen is the master of the country. Without a good citizenship, you don't have nation, you don't have a country, you don't have a state. And empower women and men. Ask for employment for all, job opportunity, whether it's on the manual worker level or the intellectual level. Building a stronger economy through building local community markets and industries. Any strong economy in any country goes bottom up. From the manual work is done at home by the, my wife and my children to the industry of the industrial work, which you can say for export uh, uh, globally. Building a better infrastructure for the country. Asking. Better road system, better health and sanitation system, better education system, better, better system of every program that we need to have in our country. This is a part of your objective as a wake-up caller, al-masaharati. Creating responsible consumer, consumer resource system. What does it mean? Means that I have to have the production, huh? The level, the level of productivity is higher than the level of cons consumption. And I teach my consumers and citizens not to waste resources like what we see in the big feasts in the rich countries. They can slaughter 100 sheep, 400 people. And 99 sheep of those will be wasted in the uh, trash. Creating and developing new sustainable societies. If we, if we are building a new city, a new town, a new uh, uh, village, you have to make it sustainable. We have to look at all the program inside such a city or a town or a governorate or a village or, whatever, or an area to make it sustainable for years to come. 
fighting discrimination and injustice, which is this is the cornerstone of your message as a wake-up caller, of our message as a wake-up caller. Fighting injustice, discrimination, oppression, building effective civil society sector and organization. We might have 100,000 organizations, 200,000 organizations, but they are not effective. We need each of the 100,000 or 50,000 or 10,000 or 5,000 organizations to be effective and productive and can make the change. That's what we want, effective civil society sector, because a government or a state which does not have an effective civil society sector is a fragile government and a fragile state. No matter how rich it is, no matter how strong its army it is, no matter how strong its actually security system is. Creating a culture of networking, Partnership, communication, nobody can do it alone now. See the G7, the G11, the G20, you see the League of Arab State, you see the United Nations, you see the GCC, you see others, you see the OIC. In spite of the fact that some of these organizations are not functioning effectively, but none of this country as a member can function alone, none of the individual can function alone. None of the company can function alone. None of the organization can function alone. Partnership, networking, and communication. This is a part of our role as a wake-up caller. And bridge building. Bridge building between cultures, between values, between religions. That's what we call by bridge building. Good governance is cross-cutting with everything. This is objective. What tools he is using, or you should be using? First of all, to endorse. Must be. Strategic planning as a mean of success. You cannot just jump without thinking, without making a proper strategic plan. In the first two years will do so. In the second five years will do so. In the third ten years will do so. That's what means that after 15 or 20 or 30 years, what is our strategic objective to be achieved in this area? Using participatory approach as a methodology. Innovation is inside the local grassroots community. It's not coming from America. It's not coming from the West. It's not coming from the East. It's not coming from the South, it's from the North. It's at every grassroots root level. You find innovative solution. Okay? So it is our methodology is to have the participatory approach to bring the local community organization with us. Building partnership with private sector, okay, fine, and civil society sector. Uh, awareness raising, all this about awareness raising. Awareness raising, capacity building of whom? Of the youth, of the young people. Build their capacity from a young age and let them to be responsible. Encouraging volunteerism in your country, in your society, in your area, in your location. Make responsibility as a part of your awareness raising. Each and every one of us is responsible not only for his bedroom or her bedroom or her job or his job, is responsible for the street they live in, the village they belong to, the districts they are part of it, the country and the globe and the humanity. Your level of responsibility has to be a part of the awareness raising program for the young people from the age of the childhood. To let them to understand that they have a global responsibility towards humanity. Utilizing the power of social media, of course, what I am communicating with you now, huh? with very minimum resources, with three mobiles and three microphones huh? on the social media. Maybe 100 people will see you, maybe 1,000, maybe a million people will see you. Utilize the power of technology. What is the pillars of the wake-up caller like yourself? First of all, your role on earth is to make it habitable to everyone. Peaceful. Peaceful. Peace for everyone. Second is invest in human being effectively. Human being is the most resourceful resource for humanity and for life 
and for the globe, invest in human being, protect national and environmental resources, creating the culture of what? Sustainability and continuity at every project. At every project we do, we have to find how it's going to be continuous and sustainable. We might have the budget of the first year or the budget of the first three years or the budget of the first six months, but we need the budget, this budget to be changing into a revolving fund coming out from such a project. Not actually to be short-lived the project for about two or three or two five years. Sustainability and continuity at, at every project you plan for. Prioritizing public interest to personal interest, which is a big fight internally, depending on the upbringing of the individual. Creating sustainable development atmosphere, so everybody will talk about sustainable development, every talk about actually uh, the, the way to understand how can we sustain the development or the process of development of our community, our society, our nation, our country, our humanity. Protecting values, extremely important values, faith, and creating social cohesion between different components of our society. These are the pillars. What is the message of you as wake-up caller or us as wake-up callers? First of all, why you have been uh, uh, always building the society. Always, 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 never stop building the society and the future of your country and the future of humanity. Non-stop process of the building uh, and of development. Love everybody. And this is a part of the message of every prophet came to earth to save humanity. Uh, help others without any distinction, without any discrimination. Think that you have a role. Your role is not only in your bedroom or in your job as a clerk or as a teacher, your Lord, you have a global role. Link yourself to the creator and the globe and the global and the creation of the globe and the globe and the creation that created by the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be responsible all the time. Be responsible and see the sense of responsibility that you can have and you can carry. Look after your humanity, as I said earlier on, and keep achieving the purpose of your creation. Allah has created us, human being and genie, to worship him. Worshiping Allah here is not in prayer and reciting Quran or reading the Bible or the Torah or the holy books or going to make pilgrimage. No, 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 no. It is in how you reform, you reform humanity, how you construct life for others. And how you save humanity, and how you spread peace, build peace, and how you serve and become a servant of humanity. This is worship. Here, let us talk about some current issues for us to be responsible for. The forgotten issues. What are the forgotten issues? First of all, look at the people or the Muslims come, Rohingya Muslims who came out from uh, Myanmar to Bangladesh. Huh? One million people over the last 50, 60, 100 years have been ethnically cleansed. Now there are one million people in Bangladesh, in Cox Bazar area. They are neither considered to be refugees by the host government, nor they are citizens of the country or the uh, which expelled them out. Look at the Tibet, Tibetan people in China. They were living in peace and harmony before the Second World War. Then they have been taken by another superpower in the area called China. Okay? What is the rights? Look at the people from Central African Republic who are now dispersed, become displaced in their homeland, then become refugees inside Chad and inside the Cameroon. Look at the the native citizens of the Amer America, 
קנדה, אוסטרליה, ניו זילנד, and uh, uh, those people under, under Australia. What is the rights? What are they? How did we treat them in the past? Look at the issue of Somalia as a big problem. Big humanitarian problem and the catastrophe for the last 30, 40 years where actually the international community spent more than 50 billion dollars on them on humanitarian response and up till now there is no proper development program for the country. Look at actually how did they evacuate and force the people who are living in the Dadaab camp in, in Kenya, which is about 500,000 million, to force them back to Somalia after living in Kenya for 25 years. Look about the issue of the Eritrean people, okay, of after the conflict in Eritrea in the 80s or the 70s, in the 70s, they're still living in east of Sudan, five, nearly 500,000 people. Nobody talks about them and they become a burden on the Sudanese government because there's lack of resources from the international community. Look at the camps of the Palestinians in, in, in uh, Lebanon and in Jordan. When they are, the, those such people are living for the last uh, 70 years huh? with, no, uh, uh, jo with no job right for them in certain countries. Look at the Uyghur people in uh, Turkestan or in actually Xinjiang. It's another area which has been a part in, in developing independently like Rohingya, like uh, Tibet, and now they are actually uh, become a minority in their own uh, country. Look at the refugees, the 80 or 70,000 boat people, refugees from the boat people actually who are living inside uh, camps, very degrading camp inside Greece for the last year or two and nobody knows them. They came and destroyed their people, destroyed their country, destroyed their economy and they created poverty in their country and, and actually those people when they tried to go to Europe for a safe haven, they've been captured and bought in this uh, degrading refugees uh, camp. Look at actually the refugees camp inside Libya from the boat people as well. Look about the, 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 the prisoners in Guantanamo. Most of them have no charges against them. But nobody talks about them. Nobody talks about them. Okay. Look about an individual called Tariq Ramadan who has been put in jail in prison in, in France for, the, for nearly a year now. And there's no charges against him. And this is not in uh, Africa. This is not in Asia, this is not in the third world countries, this is in France, the country of liberty, freedom, justice, culture, civilization, and so on. And, and, and. Look at the Democratic Republic of Congo as a wake up caller. And the number of the millions of people are internally displaced inside Congo. And the highest tribe of children and women on earth is in this area and this is the most one of the most richest country in Africa and on earth okay look at the issue of the conflict of the South Sudan 10 years ago or less we celebrated the independence of the South from the North and everybody was dancing and chanting and yelling and wailing and hailing Two years ago, there was a conflict between the tribes there. And now that one million people from the South Sudan are refugees in Uganda. Uganda is a poor country. South Sudan is a poor country. And, and nobody talks about them. Okay. Look at the re real co root causes of climate change. Global warming. Desertification. It is the multinational companies who care not... Who care about nothing? Who does not care? That does not give a damn to the local community that actually they are stealing or abusing the resources of it. Even some of the rich countries have been with uh, pulling themselves out from the climate uh, uh, conference or climate uh, change conference. Look at actually how 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 rich countries and how multinational companies are stealing the resources of the underdeveloped countries. I can say this when I was in the late 90s, we wanted to make 
uh, uh, canning of, of meat in uh, South Africa and to buy the uh, uh, animals from Botswana because it was very cheap. But when we wanted to make the deal, we found that the deal maker is in, not in Botswana itself, it's in Europe with the same rate of Europe, not the same local rate. Look at who is going to write the history, or who have been written, writing the history. It's the victorious people forging history, writing wrong history, uh, teaching us wrong things. Okay? Look at any political or economical or religious prisoner and the unfair justice in uh, judging or in actually trying them. Look at the veto issue in the United Nations. The victorious countries give their, themselves the utmost and the ultimate right to veto against any uh, 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 decision by the General Assembly. And this is creating extremism, radicalism, and what we call it now terrorism. Because there's some issues or some vetoes have been used by the member state of the Security Council for hundreds and hundreds of times to certain issues. Okay, look at the economical and the banking system, which is how it is one-sided only. It is not, it is not, it is not for the benefit of the local people in each country. Look at how difficult now to transfer money from A to B to C to D, especially if you are name, if your name is a Muslim name or an Arab name, because Islam now is the most suspected or the first target of terrorism, extremism, radicalism, and all these isms. And the people who are dying in Syria and Yemen and uh, Iraq and uh, uh, the Rohingya people and, and, and cannot find uh, 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 sustainable project or funding for their project because the banking system is preventing any money coming from such an organization to this area. <coughs> Look about how the humanitarian system is working. It's creating dependency syndrome which is incredibly fraud which is creating what we call it humanitarian colonialism or humanitarian imperialism and gave me a solution to the amount of money spent on a certain locality over the last 20 years and how effective we change the local society and community to become independent and productive, not depending on our aid material. Look at the, this depressing media, which is controlling our minds, our hearts, our dreams, our thinking ability, our planning. Because they bombard you day in and day out with sad stories. To let you believe that you are hopeless and helpless, and you become depressed. Very biased media. Unethical media. Unethical information politicized media. Look at those research institutions who keep classifying people. As I said earlier on, one of these organizations have three million people on their terrorist list. How on earth that you classify three million people on earth? You know why? Because of what? Because of the media cutting. Because of the open-ended sources. Okay? Because of the political decision of a government which is a corrupt government. And they know that it's a corrupt government. Because of the indifferences between A, B, C. Because of the politicization, politicization of such an institute, research institution. You as a wake-up caller, we are a wake-up caller, have to stand up for this unjust behavior of different institutions and different individuals. As I said, I will thank uh, Abdul Rahman and Ahmad al-Sheikh who prepared this presentation. 
Huh? But what we say, each and every one of us must become a wake up caller, not only during Ramadan, but all the, all the way during his or in her, her life. Coming back, we want to be this simple man who has a mission, who has a vision, and to have a, a program and responsibility. No matter where you are, what you do, what level of your educational education, what level of your intellectual capability, you must become this man or you this become actually a woman or a man to play the role of such an individual. The road for wakening up the people Waking up the people is very difficult, very long, with less resources, but it is the way to save humanity. It is the way to earn the respect of your life in this life and in the life to come. And this is the methodology of all the prophets and messengers of God. And this was the methodology and this is the methodology of all the reformers who came to save humanity and suffer much and give the life and the resources to save humanity. My appeal to you now on the 28th of Ramadan or 29th of Ramadan and Eid Mubarak for all of you and please celebrate the Eid with your neighborhood with Muslims and non-Muslims is each one of us should become a wake-up caller 24-7 during his life and her life. And this is for you youth. Never ever become depressed, withdrawn, or losing hope. Never ever let anybody to stop you fulfilling your dream, achieving your objective, driving your life according to your morality and the morality of humanity. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you all from everywhere. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.